So Peyton Frame in O'Valley is uh, a, a residual passageway in the heart uh, that uh, connects the right side of the heart, the venous circulation to the left side of the heart, the arterial circulation. Um, it's present in about 25% of individuals. Uh, and by uh, residual, we mean that um, it's present in utero, so a fetus has the uh, a, a frame in ovale that, uh, that basically, in principle, allows the circulation from the venous side to bypass the lungs, going straight to the left side of the heart and being pumped into the arterial circulation. Uh, and so, ordinarily, that closes at birth in the majority of people, but in um, a significant minority, about 25%, there's a residual passageway that uh, allows some uh, blood to flow from uh, the venous side of the uh, heart to the arterial side without going through the lungs in between. Yeah, so then, so then what happened is that they did population studies where people, uh, either people with Peyton Frame and O'Valley were investigated to see if they had an increased incidence of migraine and then they looked the other way around. Uh, yet if you take patients with migraine, do they have an increased incidence of Peyton Frame Valley? And either way you look, there is an association there, meaning um, uh, that uh, there's a higher uh, incidence of or prevalence of, uh, of migraine in patients who have Peyton Frame Valley. And if you look at migraine patients, they're more likely to have a Peyton Frame Valley. But the key thing is it's specifically patients with migraine with aura uh, as compared to without aura. So if you look at, ju if you just separate the, uh, the PFO, uh, sorry, the migraine with aura patients, they have the association, uh, but uh, the patients who do not have aura as part of their attacks do not have that association. So it really seems to be something to do specifically with patients who have migraine with aura as compared to without aura. That's sort of came to is the next step in the process is that there have now been done uh, three randomized placebo controlled studies of clo or actually uh, two of them were placebo controlled, meaning they, they actually had a sham procedure uh, to, so that the patient didn't know whether or not they actually had the patent for amino valley closed. Um, and I should say that they close it with a mechanical device that's uh, sort of like an umbrella uh, where you actually put the device, uh, they thread the device up into the heart from the groin uh, and then kind of open this umbrella in a way that, uh, that basically closes off this passageway. Um, so the studies uh, looked at patients uh, with and without aura and uh, n none of the studies actually hit the primary clinical endpoint of the study, meaning that the, it showed that Peyton Freeman O'Valley was effective um, in preventing migraine, uh, and, and really either migraine with or without aura. So the complicating part is that some of that has to do with the study design and what the primary endpoints were. And kind of a rule of clinical trials is that if you miss your primary endpoint, it's not really fair to go digging around in all the other ones to try and pull out, uh, you know, something positive. It's just sort of the, the rules of clinical trials. Having said that, uh, there's very interesting data in the secondary endpoints. Um, and so uh, the most recent study that was done was this one called the, the premium study. Uh, I was involved with it as an investigator uh, and part of the trial design. And uh, what the, uh, what if you do the sub-analysis uh, of uh, some of the secondary endpoints, again with the caveat that it did not hit its primary endpoint, it looks like the patients who had aura with the majority of their attacks, which is a, actually a minority of migraine patients, uh, those people actually did quite well with closure of Peyton Frame and O'Valley. Um, so, um, so we're sort of in this position here where um, we know that it's 
there. It appears to be an association, but you know, association doesn't necessarily indicate causation. Uh, so it then really comes around to the key uh, question of, you know, if you find a PFO in a patient with migraine, should you even consider closing it based on the fact that there's no clinical trial data to really strongly support that, um, uh, um, that path? And so I would say at this stage, you know, it doesn't necessarily you know, change our management of these patients, um, but it is something that we should really uh, think strongly about, uh, you know, in terms of in the future, in terms of understanding whether this is actually playing a causative role in some patients.